Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spare Tech and welcome back to our channel. And with all the talks about Windows 12 going into a subscription model, uh, there's no better time than now to switch over to Linux. So we're going to be checking out Linux Mint 21.2. So let's get started. Now, Linux Mint's been around for quite some time, and it's one of the Linux operating systems that I would recommend to someone who would be switching from Windows to Linux. Just because of how it's designed and laid out, it's very familiar to you. It's not like you have to learn a completely different desktop. So we're going to look into it now. So the first time you install Linux Mint, you will be granted with this welcome window. Uh, you can follow the steps and go through all the processes to configure it the way you want. So you can change the desktop colors. You can create snapshots with their program. You can set up all that stuff for you. Now, there are a couple of things you could do, which is like dark mode, light mode. Now, this is a mixed mode. Um, so you could choose between what you want. I would stick to what you're familiar with. I like the dark mode, so I'm going to stick with dark mode for now. But yeah, you do get that option. Uh, if you want to change the accent colors, you can as well. So you can see this is changing to blue. Uh, green is the Linux Mint color, even though they changed the wallpaper from being green, which is like everybody's like complaint, you could say. Uh, but I do like this new background, the, the gray background over here. You can also change it to, like I said, anything you want. In advanced settings, you could change the mouse pointers, uh, different icons, or um, add your own depending on what you like. Instead of changing just the icons, you could change everything else. Uh, like the menu here, the applications. If you don't like the mouse cursor, you change that mouse cursor to something else as well. So there is a lot of things you could do to customize it, but it won't really change too much compared to other Linux distros where you could completely change how everything looks. Uh, you can definitely do backups and snapshots with their time shift program, uh, similar to what you would do with System Restore. Uh, driver Manager as well, if you have an NVIDIA graphic card, you need to install drivers for that. And one of my favorite things about this, actually two things, is their Update Manager. Uh, in their Update Manager, you can actually set everything up to be automatically updating everything that you want. So if I go over to uh, Edit, Preferences, I could go over to Automation, and you see how I have everything checked off. It'll just automatically apply updates for me so I don't have to keep worrying about or waiting until the, the updates stack to like 50 things I have to update. It'll automatically update it as I go. What's cool is that the update manager also updates um, flat pack packages as well. So you don't have to go digging for flat packs to see if you need to update them. Again, you could go through all this menu and check it out yourself. They have documentations for everything. So it's, you won't really get lost in this operating system. Now, again, this look just looks similar to Windows. You know where the buttons are to minimize, maximize, and close. Your start menu is very similar as well. You have all your programs. What's cool is that you can actually resize the start menu if you need to. Uh, I could go this way as well. And they have quick shortcuts on the left side that you can change. And then all the programs that it comes with. Now, by default, it comes with actually a decent amount of programs that you would just normally use, alternative to what you would have in Windows. Like Pix is to organize your images. And this thing is, I don't have any pictures in this computer right now, but this is actually a very good uh, program to organize all your photos. Um, if you needed to, you could go into Office and you have your LibreOffice. So you have Excel, Word, everything is all over in here. Um, Internet, you have your Thunderbird Mail, so you need your mail client. They already have everything installed. I installed Steam on here as well, but it's as a matter of, it's like one click to install everything. So uh, to show you guys, I'm going to go into their software manager or app center or whatever they call it these days. Um, and I actually really like their software manager because now they actually show a lot of the flat pack um, top programs on the list. So as you can see, this has Visual Studio Code, Flat, flat Hub, and it's only a 3.3 star. Uh, Slack, you know, so they actually show stuff from their Ubuntu repository, but also show stuff from FlatHub. And again, you can search everything. Um, so let's go Flat Seal. That's a program I highly recommend to install if you're using Flat uh, FlatHub, and it's called Flat Seal. Um, this manages permissions for all flat packages, and you can see it comes up. That means it's going to be installable. It also works very fast. And if you do need multiple versions of stuff, say like Steam. It will show different versions. Like you have one for FlatHub, then you have one from this one, then you have a Steam installer. If I want to install Wine so I could run Windows programs, I could install multiple versions, either Wine from FlatHub or just Wine itself. So the software manager is top notch. It's really, really good. It actually finds a lot more programs than a lot of other software packages that I've used before. Now, heading into the file browser, uh, you guys are probably familiar with this as well. It looks very, very similar to what Windows would offer. 
and going into different files, you could just double click, uh, pictures as well. I don't have anything in pictures, but yes, you could see that everything just operates normally like you would. And you could change the layout of it if you want to look the way you used to. And if you want, again, you could change the look of it. Now, as far as settings goes, you do have a handful of settings that you can change. The theming part was what we were looking at before. And here, you could just change the style that you want easily. If you don't want to stay with Minty Y, uh, effects, you could actually add and remove the reflex or, or the speed of the transaction. Backgrounds, this is the original uh, Linux Mint background. You could change it back to this if you want. Again, it's so easy to navigate everything that you want. And you're not really coming off confused into a different desktop like this. Now, this also does support tiling windows like this. So if you are familiar with this in Windows as well, you can actually just tile them on each corner and pull them off. You still have the Alt tab to change between programs as well. And if you use the Windows key one, two, three, four, depending on how many things you have launched here, it will actually bring up the program. Let me close this out, Windows key one and it'll bring me file manager. Windows key two would give me Firefox. So again, all the stuff that you are familiar with is also transferred over here and more. Now, the only downside to Linux Mint is that it's still running on an older Ubuntu, which is 22.04, which means if you got the latest graphic card or the latest drivers for something, it might not necessarily detect it because it's using an older system with an older kernel. So that might be the only downside that you run into if you are planning to uh, install extremely new hardware. But otherwise, because it's on 22.04, it's on long-term support or LTS. That means it's very stable. So that is it for me, guys. I do highly recommend Linux Mint if you're going to be switching from Windows to a Linux operating system. The transition between the two is very seamless. So I do highly recommend that. Now, I am checking out other operating systems that you could come off Windows into Linux, like Zorin OS or other ones like that. And I will be making videos of those as well. But yeah, if you have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. If you guys have any operating systems that you want me to check out, let me know down in the comments below as well. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.